here on the implications of this with Senator Josh Hawley. He sits on the Judiciary Committee and he's meeting with Amy Coney Barrett tomorrow and was in the Comey hearing today as well. And we're going to get to that next. Senator, always good to have you with us. Thanks for being here tonight. Th so, thank you. What do you think about the fact, and, and you know, Maisie Hirano also suggested that what she would like is for people to vote first and then she'll let them know how she feels on this issue of, of packing the court. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, first of all, it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the, the vice president should answer the question. But here's the deal, Martha. At the end of the day, this court packing scheme is about contempt for the voters. It's about the fact that the Democrats have still not accepted the 2016 election results and I guess haven't accepted the 2018 election results when the American people sent more Republican senators back to Washington. I mean, the truth is Republicans won those elections and court packing is all about undoing the results of those elections. It's basically saying we don't like what voters did in those elections, so we'll just add more justices to drown out those results yeah. until we can get a court we can control. That would be a huge mistake. So Joe Biden at one point a couple of years ago said that he thought it was a dumb idea because he said exactly that. He said, so, you know, Democrats would add three justices and then Republicans would add three justices and it would just keep going uh, every time there was there was an election. But but can you explain to people at home what the impact would be of that? If you added justices to the court and also the other idea that is in play, because we know Nancy Pelosi has said that she's got lots of arrows in her quiver. If this nomination goes through of Amy Barrett, um, that they would they would do away with the filibuster, legislative filibuster, which would basically mean that there, you know, any any majority would could pass legislation. Packing the court means that uh, you add more justices, which will create a new majority, it would be a chance for the next president, Joe Biden, in this case, if he wins the election, what he hopes, uh, to appoint a number of justices that would change uh, results, change decisions, uh, change uh, the ruling and the whole composition of the court. It's been tried before. I mean, FDR tried it and his own party stood him down and rejected it. I mean, to talk about court packing, it really is, again, it's about contempt for voters. It's saying we don't like how you voted in 2016 and 2018. So we'll just put more justices on the court to basically undo the results of those elections. We don't like the fact that voters gave Donald Trump the chance to appoint three Supreme Court justices. Yeah. So we'll add three more or who knows what the number would be. And as you say, Martha, there's no end in sight. Once you start this, we could have 30 justices on the Supreme Court. It'll never stop. And if you take away the filibuster? Well, if you, if you do what, what Schumer wants to do in the Senate, which is to end the filibuster for all uh, everything, I mean, across the board, all the time, uh, he wants to turn it into basically 51 votes. We'll be able, you will take away the right of any senator uh, to be heard. You'll take away, away the right of the minority uh, to be heard. You'll take away uh, rights of debate and deliberation. Uh, there's a lot of problems with the Senate. I, I will give you that. The Senate needs a lot of reform, but turning it into a mini version of the House is a big mistake. And, to, and doing that in order to ram through a court packing plan is something that is it's effectively burning down the Constitution because, again, Democrats don't like what voters have said. So before I leave this topic, I just want to play what Kamala Harris said on this. We're all going to be at the vice presidential debate next week, and uh, we expect that we're going to hear some more questions about this. So watch this. Are you open to expanding the size of the Supreme Court? I am open to that discussion. Do you want to elaborate on that or leave it there? No, I just I'm open to it. OK. I'm absolutely open to it. He is focused, as we all should be, on the next 35 days. And he is focused on, one, the process um, by which we're even having the conversation about the United States Supreme Court. All right. So I, I'm going to leave that there and we'll pick that up, uh, you know, with this vice presidential debate that's coming up next week. Um, what about the, the Roe v. Wade issue? It's interesting to me that we heard Joe Biden say last night he thinks that Amy Barrett's a fine person and, you know, probably would be a good judge. We're, we're sort of hearing them downplaying this part of that issue. Uh, what do you see in that? Can, can I just say, first of all, on Kamala Harris, just yeah. one thing there. I mean, she is switching her positions. She's previously said she was open to packing the court. Now she won't answer the question. She's got a lot of things to answer for, and I'd like her to take a pledge, Senator Harris. I'd like her to say that she's not going to continue to engage in the kind of religious bigotry that we have seen from her towards past court nominees, interrogating their Catholicism, and other Democrats on the committee doing the same thing. They're trying to make the religious faith of Amy Barrett the central issue 
This is a form of bigotry. Let's just call that out. It is anti-Catholic, anti-Christian, anti-faith bigotry. Kamala Harris should renounce it. Joe Biden should renounce it. And every Democrat should do the same, Martha. Do you think, I mean, from what I see, it sounds like they're shifting. They're, they're getting much more into the question of health care and shying away from this. We, Nancy Pelosi said, do not bring up religion in this hearing. I mean, I'm sensing that they think that this is a political mistake for them and that they actually might not go there. It would absolutely be not only a political mistake, but it would be against the Constitution. The Constitution says there are no religious tests for office. Mm -hmm. But this questioning of, of Amy Barrett's faith about uh, her adoption, for heaven's sake, questioning whether people like her, meaning religious believers, devout Catholics, should be able to adopt children from Haiti or other countries, it's insane. And let's not forget, Democrats at her last confirmation hearings, Democrats asked her, if she was too Catholic to be a judge, if she would be a Catholic judge, if she was an Orthodox Catholic or some other form, they delve, tried to delve into her religious beliefs and use them against her. That is bigotry. That needs to stop. All right. Before I let you go, the Comey hearing today uh, got a little bit lost in the shuffle in some ways because of last night's debate. What was your takeaway from that? Big takeaway is that the CIA referred for investigation the Hillary Clinton campaign to the FBI. They did nothing. That was in September of 2016. Comey said to me, he didn't even know what he's talking about. He, he hadn't even heard about it. That tells me, Martha, it was either such a low priority that the FBI just shuffled it aside or Comey is lying. But you know what they did have time to do? They did have time to go lie to a secret court to get a wiretap on the Donald Trump presidential campaign. This is interference in an election that we have never before seen in American yeah. history. People need to go to jail for this. Oh, we're we're going to get into it more. But, I, you know, one of the things that really stood out to me is the issue of this subsource. You know, everybody was very familiar with the dossier and the unverification of that dossier. Now it turns out the reporting is that this Russian uh, Ukrainian individual born in Ukraine and believed to have been a, a, a Russian agent or suspected he was looked into it as being a Russian agent was the subsource for the dossier. And when you put that, Senator Hawley, against the fact that they didn't share, intentionally, you know, miswrote uh, that Carter Page had actually helped United States intelligence sources, they wanted to paint him as a Russian agent. But this guy who they had investigated as a Russian agent, they wanted, it looks like they wanted to just toss that under the rug so that they could believe the dossier. Is that, is that sound about right? That sounds about right. And, you know, James Comey said, well, he didn't know who the subsource was. I How asked him, did you be? bother to verify it? Remember, Comey signed off on these warrants. He certified, personally certified. And now he was saying, well, he didn't ask any questions. He didn't know who the subsource was. He didn't try to verify it. He didn't try to follow up. Here's the thing. Either he was totally and completely negligent. I mean, basically couldn't do his job at all, or this was a political hit job. And I think it's most likely the latter. Comey hated the president. He did not want him to win this election. That's why he swept the Hillary Clinton investigation under the rug and participated in deliberate lies to the FISA court to try and wiretap the Trump campaign. Well, and we still wait for the Durham uh, findings. Senator Hawley, thank you.